we are used to a 24 hour rotation cycle. So that's why we have approximately 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. But did you know that 4.5 billion years ago when the earth was just forming, at that time earth was spinning really really fast. So it was spinning at 6 hours. So it would make one full rotation in 6 hours. And so we would have 3 hours of day and 3 hours of night. So question is why was it spinning so fast and after that why did it become slow enough today to have a 24 hour cycle and will it become slower than this? Will our days and nights become longer? So how did this change happen? To understand that we need to go back to the early days of the earth formation. Earth formed along with the sun as part of the solar system. Okay, So the solar system is a gas which was basically condensing and the centerpiece became the sun and all the rocks, various rocks basically formed the earth and one of the rocks that was here, okay, so that basically is what was going to become the earth. The early earth was called Gaia, okay, when it was just forming, it's a huge rock, it was called Gaia and at that time another huge rock called Thea came and crashed into the earth, Damal. So when it came and crashed into the earth, it got the earth spinning really, really fast. Now you might be wondering why any kind of a crash will make something go fast. You can see that very easily. So for example, if I have an object here, it's not spinning very much. If there is something that comes and collides with it, can you see that when I come and hit it, unless I hit it right in the middle like this, any slight change will mean that it's going to spin that way. If I come and hit it in this direction, you will see that it's going to rotate in this direction, right? So a hit this way will make it spin. So when you had the Gaia, big earth, and this is Thea. When the Thea came and hit Gaia, it got the earth, which is basically a combination of Gaia and Thea, basically spinning really fast. And so it started spinning at six hours, one full rotation. So day plus night was only six hours at that time. And when Thea came and hit into, the Gaia, into Gaia, the explosion, the collision was so strong, it melted the whole earth. So you had the whole earth basically becoming a, like a liquid and the lot of the iron particles, so the iron particles that were at the surface because the whole thing was molten, it started sinking and so today we have an iron core for the earth and the rest of it which is rocky, well it is molten rock still, the heat that was generated you still have it today and you get all these volcanoes and all coming out because of this hot lava that is inside. But the centerpiece of the earth is iron because at that collision the entire earth melted and the heavier particles which are iron basically started going down to the center of the earth. So now you have a very fast earth that is spinning really well, right? Now let us look at how this fast earth that was spinning so much, why did it slow down to 24 hours and that has a huge connection to the moon. To understand what happened with the molten earth, remember that when Thea came and hit Gaia, okay, so the earth basically the whole of earth was molten and so the iron particles went down to the center, so the, we have a central iron core, but the whole thing was molten, right, so this whole thing was liquid, liquid lava and as liquid lava, earth was also spinning really fast, so it was spinning at 6 hours, remember, so if it is spinning that fast, what do you think will happen to that lava? So to do that, let's try and take this uh, bowl of water. I have a tennis ball in this bowl of water. I am going to take this, so now think of this as the liquid on the surface. When I have this spinning very fast, you can see that all these particles are spilling out. So there are lots of particles that are spilling out, right? So these are the molten lava pieces which are actually coming out. And as they started spinning out, these pieces because of gravity pulling each other, these things started colliding and becoming one. So you started getting a large piece. Today this large piece is what we call the moon. So the moon came out of the earth spinning. Because the earth was moving so fast, this molten piece that came out became the moon. And also you notice that this is really heavy. So the central piece of the earth is really heavy, right? Because all the heavy particles came out. What spilt out? The lighter parts. So the moon is much lighter compared to the earth. It is very, very light compared to the earth. It is a large object for its uh, size. The mass of the moon is much, much lesser. 
Why? Because it has only rocks in it. It doesn't have as much iron. So I hope this idea is clear. Now, what happens when the moon was going around is that because it came out like this, at the beginning it was very close to the surface of the earth. But as it kept moving around slowly, the distance of the moon increased. And as the distance increased, it slowed the earth down. Let us try to understand how. Let us look at this object that is hanging from a rope. If I make it spin around like this, as the length is decreasing, can you see that it, the speed increased? So when the object is getting closer, it is spinning faster. And if I do the reverse, which basically means I am now going to increase the length, you can see that as the length increases, it is becoming slower. Right? So let us try this again. So when the length decreases, the speed increases. And when the length increases, the speed decreases. Okay? So this idea is called the principle of angular momentum. So if an object, let us say is connected to this object, when they are spinning like this, they are very fast. And when you make the distance more, and when they are spinning like this, if the same object starts to go a little further away, this becomes slow. Okay, so this is fast and that is slow. Because of a principle, we call this a principle of angular momentum. The angular momentum is usually represented by the letter L. And L is moment of inertia into omega. The moment of inertia depends on how far away the mass is. So far away, if the mass is far away, that means I is more. The moment of inertia is more. So if moment of inertia is more, because when the mass goes far away, the moment of inertia increases. If the moment of inertia increases, that means this increases, this must decrease because angular momentum, this fellow is here called angular momentum must be constant. So this must be constant. So if you want angular momentum to be constant and I is increasing because the mass is going away, then omega must correspondingly decrease. So if I increases, omega decreases. So sometimes we write big I, small omega is equal to small i, big omega. So if i increases, omega decreases, i decreases, omega increases. So when the object is going further away, what is happening? Moment of inertia is increasing. And when the moment of inertia is increasing, the angular speed must correspondingly decrease. So that is basically what happened with the earth. So because when the earth was spinning and then the moon got formed, the moon was originally the surface of the earth. And as the earth kept spinning and the moon started going further away, so the moon began to do that and as the moon got little further away and today it is about 3.5 lakh kilometers away. In the beginning it was at the surface of the earth. So when the moon went that far away, because of the distance, the moment of inertia increased. So here moment of inertia increased and as moment of inertia increased, the omega decreased which means the speed at which this is turning around decreased. So omega decreased. So in the beginning, it was six hours of turn and by the time it reached there, it became, right, the earth speed, not the moon speed, but the earth speed basically became 24 hours, one turn. Okay, so basically it was turning around at one turn for 24 hours, whereas it was initially doing one turn for six hours. So that is why the earth has become much slower and so we have 12 hours days and 12 hours of night. But the beginning of the earth, it was 3 hours of day and 3 hours of night. Let us actually put in some numbers here to calculate to see whether what we are saying is quantitatively correct. So here, what I am going to do is to calculate the mass of the moon using our basic ideas. You already know some of the values that we need, which is the radius of the earth is 6400 kilometers. Okay, that is very well known, 6.4 and 10 power 6 meters. Mass of the earth you know is 6 into 10 power 24 kg. Okay? And the distance of the moon is 3,50,000 kilometers. This has also been measured quite a lot. So we know that very well. Now, if the moon was originally part of the earth, it would have been on the surface. And the whole thing was going around once every 6 hours. 
which means if this is the earth mass of the earth is m mass of the moon is small m and this distance of course is the radius of the earth the whole thing is a sphere going around and so how much should the moment of inertia of this sphere be so this would be 2 by 5 it's a sphere right so 2 by 5 the total mass is m plus m into this distance r square of course i'm making an assumption here that this is uniform well it's a molten um, earth that we are talking about early earth so we don't have to think of the early earth as basically being concentrated with a larger mass at the center so we'll take it as if it is uniform this is an approximate calculation okay and what is the angular velocity of the earth mass system at that time well it is going to make one revolution two pi radians in a time of six hours so this many radians per hour I am going to use radians per hour because everywhere if I use radians per hour, it is going to give us the same answer. So what is the angular momentum initially? It is initial moment of inertia into initial angular velocity. So I omega. So if I multiply these two, I am going to get 2 by 5 m plus m r square into 2 pi by 6 into 2 pi by 6. Okay, this is the initial system, right? Let us now look at what happens finally, which is today. So this is 4.5 billion years ago. This is 4.5 billion years ago. Okay. And today, what do we know about the earth moon system today? Well, earth is going around at 24 hours, one turn. So we know that it's omega is 2 pi by 24 radians per hour okay and the mass of the earth of course is the same radius of the earth is still the same and the moon is not here moon is really far away so this distance i'm going to call it r small r which we know is three and a half lakh kilometers and the moon which has mass m is going around but how much time does the moon take to go around the earth 29.5 days which is almost 30 days it does this in 30 days which means 30 days into 24 hours because one day is 24 hours today right so omega of the moon is 2 pi it makes one full round 2 pi in 30 days a day is 24 hours so 30 into 24 radians per hour so that is the omega of the moon now i for the earth is 2 by 5 m r square because earth is a sphere so we can look at the i for the earth moment of inertia for the earth is 2 by 5 m r square moment of inertia of the moon well about what about the center of the earth we want everything about the center of the earth so if i look at this the distance is r you can ignore the fact that moon is even a sphere it's so far away it is like a small dot so instead of writing the moment of inertia about itself i'm just going to think of the moon as just going around like this and it's rotation on its axis is very slow it takes 30 days to rotate on its own axis so we can even ignore that and so here i'm just going to focus on the fact that moon is at this distance so it is m into small r square okay so you have an angular momentum for this part and angular momentum for that part so angular momentum final is 2 by 5 m r square into 2 pi by 24 plus m r square into 2 pi by 30 into 24 notice that 2 pi by 24 is common and what we want really what i want here is to recognize that the initial angular momentum of the system must be equal to the final angular momentum of the whole system together that is this whole thing must be equal to this so l i must be equal to l f so now let me write these two values the initial angular momentum is 2 by 5 m plus m r square into 2 pi by 6 right so i'm going to write that 2 pi by 6 here i'm going to cancel out a lot of these so therefore we'll keep it here this is the initial angular momentum of the system and that must be equal to the final angular momentum of the system so which is this okay now you have this 2 pi by 24 which is common so why don't we write that 2 pi by 24 up front and then i have a 2 by 5 i also have a 2 by 5 here i would like to cancel that so i want to write 
2 by 5. I want to write the 2 by 5. But this does not have a 2 by 5. So you can multiply by 2 by 5. And then you can also multiply by 5 by 2. So that means the 2 by 5 can be taken out common. So if I take that out, so 2 by 5 comes out. I have m r square inside m r square. This has already come out. And then 2 by 5 has come out. 2 pi by 24 has also come out. So you are left with m r square by 30. Okay, m r square by 30 is remaining. And then of course 5 by 2 is also remaining. So 5 by 2. This is just for calculation simplicity. Okay, so now first the 2 by 5 can be cancelled out on both sides. 2 pi can be cancelled out. 6 cancels out 24 giving you 4. So when the 4 goes here, you will end up with 4 times m r square plus 4 times small m r square. Okay, I have taken the 4 on that side. Is equal to capital M R square plus, well we can cancel this out, this is going to give me 6. So 6 into 2 is 12, so plus M R square by 12, small m r square by 12. And if I take this to this side, I am going to get 3 M R square. So this means 3 M R square, M is mass of the earth, we know, radius of the earth, we know, so 3 M R square. Let us take everything to that side, is equal to small m into r square by 12 minus 4 capital R square. So from this we can write the mass of the moon. So from this we get mass of the moon must be 3 times mass of the earth radius of the earth square, 3 times mass of the earth radius of the earth square by r square by 12 minus 4 r square. I have all the values required I can substitute. So I have 3 times mass of the earth 6 into 10 to the power of 24 we know that there into radius of the earth square remember radius of the earth is 6.4 in 10 power 6 so 6.4 square 10 power 6 square is 10 power 12 divided by r square by 12 r is 3.5 right by into 10 power 8 so 3.5 square into 10 power 8 square is going to give me 10 power 16 by 12 minus 4 into 6.4 square into 10 power 6 square which is 10 power 12. Well, if you want to do the exact calculation we can do it but if you can see it very clearly that this is going to be much smaller than this right because this is 10 power 16 that is 10 power 12. So even if I ignore that you are going to get if I ignore it then I can get an approximation then what I can say is that this 12 goes up so you have 6 into 3 that is 18 into 12 into 6.4 square by 3.5 square and this is 10 power 24, 10 power 12, 10 power 16. So 10 power 24, 10 power 16 is uh, going to give us 10 power 8 that is 10 power 20 and if I do this calculation this turns out to be 7.22 but if I did the exact calculation with that it will turn out to be 7.3 into 10 power 22 kilograms. Okay, so I did both the calculations. So with this you can quickly check that this is about 7.2 that is going to be 7.3 if I keep that also. And so let us uh, check it out whether that is really is the mass of the moon. So I'm going to use my phone. Let us just Google and so Google mass of the moon and you see it is 7.34 into 10 to the power of 22 is what different calculations have shown. So the moon's mass according to Google is 7.3 into 10 to the power of 22. Our angular momentum calculation gives the exact same answer. Physics works.